Hello children, welcome to yet another class of English for grade 6. As you all know that the world is full of beautiful images, beautiful things which we enjoy every time whenever we look at them. In the same series, we have rivers, mountains, sky, flowers, so many things are there. If we look around ourselves, we find them and we enjoy them a lot. Apart from these things, there are many things which are beautiful. If you look at the city landscapes, you will find that the cities are also beautiful. If you look within yourself, because these are some things, whatever we have talked about so far, those are the things which lie outside. But what about within, within ourselves? Yes, we are also beautiful. We also have a great beauty which lies within ourselves. So, today we will talk about the beauty which lies outside in everything that has been created by God Almighty and at the same time we will talk about the beauty which lies within ourselves also. So, apart from this beauty that we experience in the objects outside and within ourselves, there is music also. The music which a careful listener can always understand. This is the music which is created by the different phenomena and different activities of nature. So, in today's class, we will try to learn about all this beauty and music which lies in the different things created by that God Almighty. So, to enumerate a few things which you see as the things of beauty in the world outside, you know, the first one that you see is a natural landscape. In the picture, you can see a landscape, it presents its own beauty. Then we have rivers, rivers are always beautiful and they house great natural phenomena around themselves. Then we have beautiful flowers, these flowers when we look at them, we feel a different kind of joy in our soul. Then mountains, these mountains have always attracted the attention of human beings. From common human beings to the kings to the sages, great rishis, they all love these mountains because they present a great beauty to us. They are grand, they are majestic. Then cities which are not uh, a natural creation, but yes, cities are a creation of human beings. We have created these cities and they are also very, very beautiful. There are many beautiful cities in the world which are worth visiting. Birds, now these birds, they represent the different creatures of uh, the world. There are many creatures, living beings which are beautiful. So, children you have seen the different things of beauty which are either created by nature or by human beings. But the common thing is beauty which lies everywhere in all these objects, places and creatures. Basically we all are created by God Almighty and that beauty which we search for Certainly, it lies in the eyes of the beholder. The person who looks at different things, he has that beauty in his eyes. So, certainly that beauty has to be identified and we will try to identify that beauty through today's chapter. The chapter is a poem titled as Beauty. The title itself is beautiful, is not it? So, it is written by E. Ye Shaw. This poem is in the fourth unit of NCRT book for class 6 that is Honeysuckle. So, let us explore today's poem and let us see what the writer wants to say about beauty. Beauty in itself is a wonderful thing that gives us great feelings when we consider anything beautiful. The poet is E. Ye Shaw. Let me first tell you about E. Ye Shaw. E. Ye Shaw is also known as Louis 
Abita Chivivi or Blue Corn. She was born on September 9, 1926 and she died on July 21, 2014. She was a Native American writer, poet and educator. She is famous for her book, I Am a Pueblo, Indian Girl. So now let us go through the poem. Dear learners, I would like to read the poem for you first of all so that uh, you can understand the beauty of this poem's music and lyrics. So now let us read the poem, Beauty. Beauty is seen in the sunlight, in the trees, the birds, corn growing and people working or dancing for their harvest. Beauty is heard in the night, wind sighing, rain falling or a singer chanting, anything in earnest. Beauty is in yourself, good deeds, happy thoughts that repeat themselves in your dreams, in your work and even in your rest. Now let me explain the poem to you. First of all, I would like to tell you that the poem is divided into three stanzas. The first and second stanzas have five lines each and the last stanza has six lines. As you can see in these pictures here, in the first stanza there are five lines, in the second stanza there are again five lines and in the last stanza there are six lines. In the first stanza, the poet talks about beauty during the daytime. Okay. As you can see in the picture, the poet says that the beauty is seen in the sunlight. Sunlight is very, very beautiful as we all know. Then there is beauty in the trees. There are different kinds of trees in the world. Then there is beauty in the birds. You can see there are different kinds of birds in the world and they all present a great beauty. Then there is beauty in the corn fields. Now these corn fields, they represent all fields where not only corn but other grains are grown. So there are many farmers who work on these corn fields. These people, they work and dance together and pray for a good harvesting season. Children, a good harvest means a lot to the farmers as it pays them for their hard work and labor. So, they work very, very hard and they dance whenever they see that a good harvest has been received by them as a result of their hard work. Isn't it beautiful to have all these things, these beautiful sights, beautiful images of sunlight, trees, birds, corn fields and farmers? They all come to your minds whenever you talk about them. All these things and scenes are really very, very beautiful. And that beauty makes you visualize all of these images in your minds. Then the poet talks about the beauty presented by night. The poet says that the night has its own sides of beauty. First, he says that beauty is heard when we hear the sounds of wind sighing, raindrops falling and the muttering of singers. These are beautiful sounds which one can hear in the night when everything is calm 
and quiet. So, the one thing that is common in all these images are the sounds which are created either by the wind sighing or the raindrops falling or the muttering of singers. The person who is able to understand the sounds which are created, the person finds that there is music, hidden music in all these sounds which one hears. These are all beautiful sounds which we can hear in the night when everything is calm and quiet around us. And finally, the writer talks about the beauty which lies in one's own self. The poet highlights the beauty that lies in the good works and positive thinking. According to the poet, one must keep doing the good deeds that one has been doing. Beauty not only lies in your good works and positive thinking, but also in the dreams and even in the rest that one takes. There is beauty that lies that is everywhere around. Thus, in the final stanza, the poet emphasizes upon the beauty which lies within us, the human beings. So, children, I hope that you would be able to appreciate the beauty which lies in the different natural objects and certainly all the activities which we see around ourselves in day to day life. Beauty is something that lies in the eyes of the beholder and it is proven by this poem. According to the poet, beauty lies in everything that we do, in our deeds. So, we must be positive. We must do everything whatever is supposed to be done by us and we should leave everything to God and that way we will be very happy. So, a great positivity lies in everything that we do. Even if we take rest, even in that rest there is beauty. So, we should not underestimate anything that we do. So, all these things will certainly make us happy and cheerful. All these things will lead to a great sense of beauty in our mind and soul. So, children, while reading the poem, several images would have come in your minds. These images came to your minds simply because they were discussed in the course of the study of this poem. Now, let us talk about the images used in the poem, the beautiful images which came to your minds are of sunlight. You would have felt that how sunlight takes place during the daytime and how beautiful it is. The next image was of trees, how beautiful are the trees, small and big of different shapes, different types of leaves. So, all these trees would have come to your minds. Then, the image of different kinds of birds would have struck your mind. These birds which are again of different shapes, they not only fly, but sing also. And I hope you were able to remember and imagine the sounds, the beautiful sounds that they create while they sing. Then the images of corn fields would have come to your mind. Apart from the corn fields, the images of different other fields would also have come in your minds along with the people working in the fields. These people are not only working, 
but they are dancing also because they have received a rich harvest this time. You would also have imagined different sounds which are created during the night like the sound of wind sighing, the sound of rain falling and the chanting of some song by some singer. This singer is somewhere at some distance and you are able to listen to the song sung by the singer. Now, all these images they fill us with a feeling of awe and wonder. So, children, now is the time to add some more words to your vocabulary, to the word power that you already have. So, here is the activity for the same. There are a few words and phrases which I have chosen from the poem to enhance your vocabulary. The words and phrases are harvest, wind sighing, earnest and chanting. Let us discuss the meanings of these words. I hope you are able to see these old words along with the meanings which are given in front of them, but you have to match the correct meanings here because the correct meanings are not written in front of these words and phrases. So, it is very important that you try to find out the correct meaning associated with that word or phrase. So, let us do it. I hope you would have done it in your minds and uh, uh, let us go ahead with this activity now. So, the meaning of the first word that is harvest is the process or period of gathering in crops after the crops ripe. If you have a look at the place where the first word harvest has been used, you will find that this word has been used where the people work and dance on the farms. They dance because they are happy to look at a very good harvest. After this, we have the phrase wind sighing. It means to emit a long, deep, audible sound of wind blowing. Children, you would have heard the sound of the soft moving wind in the night. This sound has its own music which the poet talks about in the poem. So, the next word is earnest which means serious. The place where this word has been used in the poem is when the poet talks about the singer who sings anything in earnest. It means that the singer is singing something as per the mood of the night in a serious and low tone. Children, now we have the final word that is chanting. It means to say something in a sing song tone. It refers to the singing of the singer who sings the song in a 
sing song manner in the night. So, children, I hope through this activity you have been able to enhance your vocabulary by adding some new words in your already existing word power. So, at the end it is time to assign you some homework which you will do at your homes. The homework for you is as follows. The poet says beauty is heard in. Now, can you hear beauty? Add a sound that you think is beautiful to the sounds the poet thinks are beautiful. The poet Keats said, heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. What do you think this means? Have you ever heard a song in your head long after the song was sung or played? It simply means that you have to hear identify the sounds which are there which you understand even if those sounds are not understood by other people. Then you have to read the first and second stanzas of the poem again. Note the following phrases. There are some phrases which you have to note. Corn growing, people working or dancing, wind sighing, rain falling, a singer chanting. These could be written as corn that is growing, people who are working or dancing. So, children you have to rewrite the other phrases, wind sighing, rain falling and a singer chanting rewrite these phrases completely in full sentences and then you have to at the same time think why poet uses these short phrases and you have to write that reason. I hope that you will be able to understand this thing and write an answer to this question. Then you have to find pictures of beautiful things you have seen or heard of. You may use internet or any other sources and you may stick some of those pictures or you may make some other pictures in your copy. You may draw them using some colors and finally, you have to write a paragraph about beauty. You have to use your own ideas along with the ideas in the poem. You may discuss your ideas with your partner. Now, this partner can be some friend or your parents as well at home. So, children, I hope you would have been able to understand the concept of beauty and not only you would have understood it, but you would have been able to enjoy the things of beauty which are there around us. And within ourselves. I hope that you would have written the homework also and because this is a very interesting poem and along with the poem, the homework that has been given to you that is also very beautiful and innovative. I hope you will have fun doing this homework in trying to find out those images and in using your imaginative minds to find out the answers to all the questions which have been asked from you. So, with this I take your leave, we will meet in the next class. Thank you.